Hey, welcome to another Lost Ark video. With so many things to do in Lost Ark, it is easy to get overwhelmed. In this video I'll go over the few things you should be doing on a daily basis along with some tips that will help you organizing your time better and will help with the long term progression. Right, first and foremost, the Procyon Compass... Procyon? Yeah, one of the compass thingies. Anyhow. This little icon is going to become your best friend once you reach endgame. This tool will tell you which of the daily account-wide activities are available. This usually consists of either Chaos Gates or Field Bosses, Ghost Ship and Three Adventure Islands. As mentioned, you can only do this once a day per roster and it gives you fantastic rewards. While Adventure Islands have pretty low bar of entry, Chaos Gates, Field Bosses and Ghost Ships, as you can see, like they all have a different item level associated with them. You should always aim to do those that uh, are closest to your uh, item level to help you with the progression. Take note that Ghost Ship is the only one that you can do once a week and it's the only one uh, that requires a uh, specific item level to actually enter the content. Meanwhile, for example, for the field bosses what a lot of people have been doing is farming Aurion since it's one of the fastest one to kill on uh, in the end game progression and you don't need to actually be 1385 in order to participate. For Adventure Islands, I suggest focusing on uh, the ones that usually provide you uh, with a decent rune, for example uh, Lagoon Island. This one gives a wealth rune which is uh, amazing for support classes, but uh, ultimately the choice is up to you. You can just uh, maybe farm uh, the island souls, maybe you need more pirate coins etc etc, but always choose something that is a priority for yourself. Now that we covered the compass, let's move on the actual daily quests, or Una dailies as they are called in Lost Ark, Una tasks. You can do three of these each day per character, you can increase the limit for a day using the items like this. Uh, Una tasks daily plus, uh, you do get them from the events which I'm gonna be covering a bit later. So how to approach dailies? Since uh, there seems to be many of them, this is personal preference, but the way I approach is simple. On my main character, I focus on ones that are going to help with my item level progression first. So most of the time, I will choose uh, Leapstone uh, dailies which provide me with the Leapstones. While my alts are either gonna grind specific dailies for reputation or silver upgrade materials for themselves. You can search which one you get, uh, which one you got available in the search bar up here. Like for example, Leapstones. I'm not sure why the tree was uh, there, but uh, yeah, let's skip uh, that part. So, on a leapstone. Oh yeah, this is my favorite. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how to do that as well. So, in this menu, so it will pretty much pop up all the daily quests that uh, reward you with uh, honor leapstones. So, it's up to you to choose which ones you want to do. As I said, uh, uh, they all have pretty much like a uh, reputation associated with them. Take note that these quests will all take into account uh, your actual gear score so for me this is going to be honor leapstones for you might be some other leapstones from tier 1 or tier 2 so it pretty much uh, the only the only change that won't be uh, seen here is uh, with silver silver pretty much stays the same for both uh, tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 so sil silver progression is great for your uh, to have like one out doing all these things takes time but thankfully we got ways to speed it up mainly through the Bifrost system. So let's get uh, here. So this little icon over here. Which is another teleporter feature. Where you can place it uh, wherever you choose to. To start with. Uh, a single Bifrost. Uh, you get one single Bifrost once you reach max level. And you unlock uh, additional ones through leveling your account. Or uh, roster level. We get two more from Crystalline Aura. Which is absolutely amazing. And honestly necessary. If you plan to play the game long term. It costs 420 crystals in a shop per month, which equates to about uh, three to 4,000 gold on my server with the current prices. But the benefits it provides are just unmatched. This gives you option from the get-go of three Bifrost to set up anywhere you want. So what I'm doing is basically, I just set up the Bifrost on a location of my daily quest and just do the rotation each day, I log on to that character. It's simple and time efficient. One more tip for saving time here is to take quests that are super fast to finish even if you already maxed out the reputation. 
I just grind the reputation through my alts since most of the dailies I want to farm my reputation from give something other than leapstones, for example. You can choose something differently, but uh, once you get used to the dailies and uh, once you see a few of them, you, you're gonna notice that there is a difference. Some take much longer than the other ones. So this one is uh, up to you how you want to approach this. And for the final leg of your daily list is Guardian Raids and Chaos Dungeons. So let us move back to the Nia village so we can look at the list first. Alright, if you are still progressing through tier 1 and tier 2, I would suggest to hold off from doing this as the last thing on the list since chances are you will get some upgraded materials from other activities mentioned which will make you do a higher item level, for example Guardians uh, or the Chaos Dungeon itself. Because like the higher you go, like the more rewards you get for doing it. And uh, honestly, like Chaos Dungeon itself is not that hard, so you should definitely hold off uh, when you're doing like uh, the lower item levels. So do this one, especially the Chaos Dungeon Guardian Raids operates a bit differently. But uh, for Chaos Dungeons, I suggest this to be the very, very last resort for you. All right. As I said, Chaos Dungeon operates differently since it's always best to do the highest one you can do. Guardians, on the other hand, depending on uh, where you are at the moment with your gear progression can be significantly harder and longer to do on a daily to daily uh, basis especially if you are like talking about like multiple alls that you want to do things with so there is like few ways that you can approach this so for tier 1 and tier 2 i would focus on the guardians that you can farm efficiently so if you go and look at through the list of the ones that we got the available so they are not all made equal so if you look into, for example, for a uh, raid level 2, here, Chromanium and uh, Nakrasina are much, much easier to do. Maybe Nakrasina not as much as uh, Chromanium, but uh, for example, Flame Fox, this one, as you can see by my kill records, uh, like, okay, this one doesn't really reflect uh, the best, but uh, this used to be like my highest, uh, my longest uh, kill count, same with uh, Titalos, but this one uh, was bugged as well. Anyhow, you should always focus on ones that you can uh, clear faster. And it's, since it's just more efficient to do it that way, if you're like uh, looking to maximize the time gain, since uh, yes, you might lose on some materials, but uh, going through the frustration of the matchmaking or just finding the groups uh, to clear them fast enough uh, might not be worth like some extra leap stones or uh, some extra materials. Sometimes you just want to get it out of the way. My option of if I'm item level stuck on these guardians that are taking more time than the others is simply to use a stronghold dispatch system for one clear a day. I usually do this for my alt since current tier 3 guardians for me uh, are uh, extremely fast. I don't have access uh, to the big ones yet but uh, this one as you can see like they take 4 minutes and uh, I almost I don't think I ever wiped on any of the tier 3, three guardians honestly. They feel much much easier compared to half of the other ones that uh, we saw there on the list. One more thing I want to add to this list is the current event happening and soon to come challenge dungeons. These both are daily content which is going to provide you with resources to upgrade your gear and should definitely be on the list uh, to be on your daily list of things to do. Arcasia Grand Prix for example this one gives a significant amount of honing resources uh, on a weekly rotation so definitely take this one into account it doesn't take long this is like a five minute thing that you do uh, per day it, all of these arcade event coins you can get them uh, through doing uh, all the other daily activities i just mentioned and along with uh, the race itself giving you like 700 so it's very easy to max out uh, this and uh, make sure to take uh, to, to max out uh, the shop because uh, all of these rewards very 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 good and very easy to come by and as i said they are on a rotating weekly schedule so you should definitely go for uh, both since it does have like tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 materials you can use uh, three different characters to buy things off to level them up uh, it's great it's uh, it's great it's fast and it's probably one of the most uh, beneficial things uh, at the moment in the entire game and there you go hopefully this guide helps somewhat with a daily checklist of things to do and maybe save some time doing it i know there is plenty of things uh, to do in low stark but this should be your priority as the most as they are the most rewarding and on a constant refresh day in and a day out some are like as i said weekly but uh, most of these things was a daily thing as always leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more low star content comment if you got any questions regarding the game and you can join us on twitch where i stream five times a week 
Links will be posted in the description down below. For now, Crotemplar out. Saluten. Bye!